Hello, and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council's regular meeting for Tuesday, October 29th, 2019. My name is Kim Clark Baskin, and I'm the Deputy City Clerk. With us today, we have our sign language interpreter, Sean Graham. The following is a list of legislation to be introduced by Pittsburgh City Council. Councilman Reverend Ricky Burgess presents Bill Number 2225. Resolution transferring the amount of $150,000 from the Office of Management and Budgets Operating Budget to the Workforce Development Fund. Budget Year 2019. Bill Number 2226. Resolution amending Resolution Number 863 of 2018, effective January 1 of 2019, entitled Resolution Adopting and Approving the 2019 Capital Budget and the 2019 Community Development Block Grant Program and the 2019 through 2024 Capital Improvement Program by reducing flood control projects by $550,000 and increasing bridge upgrades by $530,000 and increasing Swinburne Bridge by $20,000. Bill number 2227, resolution amending resolution number 432 of 2019, authorizing the mayor and the city of Pittsburgh Ethics Hearing Board to enter into a professional services agreement with Rothman Gordon PC for professional legal services regarding ethics matters by increasing the total cost from $15,000 to $20,000. Bill number 2228, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of finance to execute an agreement of sale and all related documents necessary to effect the purchase by the city of Pittsburgh in lieu of taking by eminent domain of 410 Matthews Avenue in a 30th Ward and to accept a deed for the property, further authorizing the expenditure of funds for the purchase, closing, and other associated auxiliary costs. Councilwoman Deb Gross presents Bill Number 2229, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of City Planning to receive $80,000 grant award per agreement between the City of Pittsburgh and the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources executed May 5th of 2019 to support the document of an Emerald View Park Master Plan and to further enter into contract to hire consultants Merritt and Chase to develop aforementioned master plan with additional city expenditures of a local match, not to exceed $55,000 for a total contract value, not to exceed $135,000. Councilwoman Darlene Harris presents Bill Number 2230, Resolution Further Amending and Supplementing Resolution Number 855 of 2011, entitled Adopting and Approving the 2012 Capital Budget by, by transferring a total of $37,392.76 from closed and completed projects within District 1 neighborhood needs to public safety AEDs for $9,514, District 1 DPW projects $7,878.76 and American Legion Post, number 681, for $20,000. This bill is sponsored, sponsored by Councilwoman Darlene Harris. Bill number 2231, resolution further amending resolution 549 of 2012, entitled Providing for an Agreement and or Use of Existing Agreements and or Contracts for the Purchase of Materials, Supplies, Equipment and or Services for City Council Neighborhood Needs Program and providing for the payment of the cost thereof by transferring 
$37,392.76 from closed and completed projects within District 1 neighborhood needs. Councilman Daniel Lavelle presents Bill Number 2232, Resolution Authorizing the Issuance of a Warrant in favor of the Sheriff, County of Allegheny, in an amount not to exceed $15,436.99 for security service provided for the City of Pittsburgh's Richard S. Calajuri Great Race on September 29, 2019. Councilwoman Teresa Kale Smith presents Bill Number 2233. Resolution amending Resolution 665 of 2018 entitled Resolution Providing for an Agreement or Use of Existing Agreements Allowing for Compensation Paid to PennDOT of Local Costs Associated with the East Carson Street Supplemental Improvement Project being undertaken by PennDOT and further providing for the payment of the cost not to exceed $690,737.35 by providing for certain contributions to be made by the city through separate legislative appropriations in a subsequent year in an amount not to exceed $886,162.99. Councilwoman Erica Strasberger presents Bill Number 2234. Resolution further amending Resolution 479 of 2016 as amended by Resolution 769 of 2018 and Resolution 664 of 2019 entitled Authorizing the Mayor, the Director of Permits, Licensing and Inspections, the Director of City Planning and the Chief of Innovation and Performance to enter into a professional services agreement with Building I, Inc to purchase software and related support services that will create an interactive map for internal and public visual display of planning, permit, license, and violation data in order to correct a JDE account number. Council President Bruce Krause presents Bill Number 2235, Communication from Kevin Paulos, Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting acting pay approvals on behalf of the Department of Innovation and Performance for Matthew Klink, per the acting pay policy revised in June of 2018. That concludes the reading of the legislation for introduction. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this regular meeting of Pittsburgh City Council for today, Tuesday, October 29th, 2019. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess, Mr. Coghill. Here. Ms. Gross, Mrs. Harris, Mr. Lavelle, Mr. O'Connor. Here. Mrs. Cal Smith. Here. Ms. Strasberger. Here. Mr. Krause, President. Here. Five members present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. May I ask you all to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, and then I ask that you would please remain standing for a moment of silence. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Our next order of business will be proclamations, and I'd like to begin with Councilwoman Michael <coughs> Smith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay down in the room. I'm good. Thank you. Um, could we have the fire bureau please come forward? Do you want to come up? I think everyone knows our firefighters do a tremendous amount of work, and we'll probably all the council members will come up. They do a tremendous amount of work in the city, and not only do they educate our residents about fire prevention and fire safety, and show how to escape a fire, and 
distribute and install fire smoke detectors, but they also do something, and I want to say John's the one who brought it to my attention first, that they distribute coats to kids across the city of Pittsburgh. Coats, hats, gloves, scarves, sometimes book backpacks or bags for the back. Um, and just, it's one of the nicest things I've ever seen any of our, our, our city our city do in general, just to be honest with you. And so I just want to acknowledge that as well, and it's not in this proclamation, but I want to acknowledge that that's, that began, at least to my knowledge, under you. So, Whereas, since the Great Chicago Fire in 1922, the National Fire Prevention Association has sponsored an annual public observance of Fire Prevention Week in October. And whereas the theme this year was not every hero wears a cape, plan, plan and practice your escape recognizing everyday people who encourage their households to develop and practice a home fire escape plan, which can have life-saving impact. And whereas the City of Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire is dedicated to the safety of life and property and are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas the Fire Safety Education Officer presents fire safety programs and demonstrates to community groups and schools and encourages residents to take a proactive role by getting educated about fire safety. And I want to say Lisa Epps is that person, right? And she just got married this past weekend. So congratulations to Lisa. And whereas, because 79% of all fire deaths occur in home and are due to smoke inhalation, the Bureau supplies and installs smoke detectors to any city resident that requests one. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby commend the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire for their commitment to serving and protecting their fellow residents, and we encourage the citizens of Pittsburgh to take personal steps to increase their safety from home fires. And be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare Tuesday, October 29th, 2019, to be Fire Bureau Appreciation Day in the City of Pittsburgh. May I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Congratulations. We need to say a few words, and I know Ralph Sakura is out of town, so you can talk a little bit and say, say a little bit about fire. And how people can get smoke uh, thank you guys very much. Um, just so everyone's aware in the uh, public in general, uh, with the city's 311 number, that is how you're able to go ahead and get your name and number. Uh, get you on get yourself on a list for free smoke detectors to be installed by the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire and also want to congratulate uh, our fire prevention officer Lisa Epps for getting married and the fabulous job she does with all of our schools and their training so thank you all members want to join us sure. join Okay, may we have Councilwoman Harris, please? Sure. May I have the young preservationist, please? Really thrilled to give this proclamation. Okay. These folders have been falling apart a bit. Okay, and it reads Whereas Pittsburgh is the home to numerous historic and uh, significant structures, some of which were threatened with neglect, abandonment, or demolishing. We just had three that got demolished. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. And whereas the Young Preservationist Association of Pittsburgh has worked tirelessly to save some of the area's most critical endangered structures and sites, 
And whereas the Young Preservationist Association mission is to cultivate and encourage young voices in historic preservation by educating young people about the value of preservation as a key component of economical vitality and community renewal, training young people to use strategic and tools to preserve local history and provide opportunity for young participants uh, in preservation activities. And whereas the Young Preservationist Association has made Okay, it's focus to engage and educate the community to advocate for the historic preservation instead of overlooking the voices of neighbors and community leaders. The association actively seeks them out and encourages them to be a part of preservation process. And whereas since 2002, the Young Preservationist Association has thrown a top 10 preservation list, listing release party that highlights some of the most endangered sites that are worth saving for the future generations. This year's 10 party, 10, 10 top party will be held on Friday, November 1st at Alphabet City in Pittsburgh's North Side. And while celebrating the association's 17 year anniversary, it now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby recognize and commend the Young Preservationist Association of Pittsburgh for preserving our region's unique history and providing a platform for young people to participate in historic preservation. And be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare Friday, November 1st, 2019, to be Young Preservationist Association of Pittsburgh Day in the City of Pittsburgh. May I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, this is mine. Page. Councilman Harris, Mr. President, members of City Council, you know, it is an honor to have an opportunity to uh, address you briefly. Uh, you know, our organization is mostly about empowerment. It's about bringing voices together to recognize all the work that we need to do as stewards of this beautiful historic fabric that has been entrusted to us by our forefathers and our foremothers. And I would like to thank all the work that each of you do. I've uh, recently been reading uh, about the conversations that are being had in the city about historic preservation. And the one thing that is exciting that's on our horizon is working in different communities to take historic homes that are vacant and turn them into affordable housing for some of our, uh, our residents that really could use, uh, use a hand. So I'm looking forward to having a conversation with each of you about this work. Uh, what we're hoping to do is create what's called a revolving fund. You put some resources in, you stabilize a home, and then you get that same money back out so that you can do it again. Uh, it's basically core and shell, and I think it could be a, a great uh, way to attack, I think, a very pressing problem. But for a moment, I would like to take the spotlight and shine it on Councilwoman Harris. Darlene, thank you so much for all the help that you've given us. Thank you for your encouragement. And most of all, thank you for your friendship. We've had a wonderful opportunity to work together. We were able to get $1.5 million dedicated to restore the historic Allegheny Commons pedestrian bridge in Allegheny Commons, which is, will be a great way to reconnect the community with itself. And I'm thankful for all your leadership. And just as I mentioned, thank you for your friendship. Thank you all.
And if everybody else would come up. We're working in every, we're yeah, working every neighborhood. Every neighborhood. Well said, well said. Oh, you for a few. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, we have one uh, proclamation to be read into the record, and it is presented by Councilwoman Strasburger. Councilwoman Strasburger presents, now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby honor the significant impact of Carnegie Mellon University on arts and theater education in Pittsburgh on Broadway and worldwide and applauds the Tony Awards and its leadership for promoting the critical importance of arts and theater education and be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare Thursday, October 31st, 2019 to be Tony Awards Day in the City of Pittsburgh. Uh, may I have a motion in a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. We're going to read that next week. We I, I thought since he only knows, we should just read it. Can we just read it? Okay. Sure. Okay. Just hey, uh, okay. Yes, okay. please. Councilwoman Kel Smith and Council. Council President Bruce Krause presents. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby commend Darren Kelly for being named Democrat of the Year and for his public safety service to the City of Pittsburgh, and be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare Wednesday, October 30th, 2019, to be Darren Kelly Day in the City of Pittsburgh. Motion to approve with a brief discussion. Sure. Um, I'd just like to make sure we add all members of council as, as equal sponsors because we want to present this Councilman Cross and I talked as um, one unified group because yes. he's done a lot for all so of us. So all sponsors, not co-sponsors. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed substantions. <coughs> Surprise, Darren. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, he, know, he knows. We've been talking this morning. Okay. Uh, with that, that concludes the proclamation portion of the council meeting. Takes us into public comment. Anyone wishing to speak before City Council this morning? Of course, we'll have three minutes in which to do so. I would ask that you would please uh, begin by giving your name and the neighborhood in which you reside for our public record. The green light will indicate the start of your three minutes. When the yellow light comes on, you'll have one minute to summarize your thoughts. When the red light comes on, your time will have expired. I would like to take this opportunity to remind everyone here that our rules of council are clear when they state that comment is limited to matters of concern, official action or deliberation, which are or may come before this council at another time. We will not permit profanity and we will maintain order at all times. May we have our first speaker, please? May we have our first speaker, please? May we have our first speaker, please? I don't think I'm the first speaker. No, I'm not. Do you? Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Dixie Timmets, I live right on the borderline of Oakland and Shady Side. Thank you. Good morning. Okay. Uh, today, I don't really have anything to go bad boys, bad girls today. I wanted to talk to you in general about some of the things that I have experienced as a citizen here and when I come here or to the uh, county council meetings. First of all, 
well, I might as well start with this, though, too. The parks. This looks like a wonderful thing. Looks like a wonderful thing, and I read in the paper that it would be, uh, it would be taken care of financially by a mill tax or something. But I have to tell you the truth, that I don't trust you completely. And I want to tell you why. Because I really wonder where the rest of the money is coming from. And I have seen this group and the other group sometimes vote against things or for things that you knew the general public did not want or did want. So it makes me think, wait a minute. Now, I'll go on. That one, I really, I still don't know. And I wonder, is this coming from some of the fracking that is already going on under our parks or not? Don't have an answer. All right, now I'm going to go on to the good things. But this was a good thing for me to learn. I just wanted to say a few things. And the first thing was, one of the things that you have done that have given me hope, when I come here, and I know that you have done some listening. You have done some caring. When you do those proclamations, it gives me hope for this city, and it makes me proud. And I thank you. I thank you for listening to people and for doing those things. I have one thing I want to read, and that's it. You cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Thank you. Thank you, Dixie. Okay, may we have our next speaker, please? Hey, good morning. Good morning. My name is Carmen Brown. I'm from the Penn Plaza Supporting Action Coalition. Burgess, you are the face of corruption in the 9th Council District. The Gumbers have given you, Ricky Burgess, thousands of dollars in campaign contributions to do their bidding. Gumbirds, Gumbirds are nothing but a family of thugs who caused the death of residents in Penn Plaza. Besides displacing residents from Penn Plaza, the Gumbirds performed hazardous construction while residents were still living in the Penn Plaza building. The construction was so hazardous that the Gumbirds crew had to wear hazmat suit while residents ingested toxic poison. So Ricky Burgess, you're pushing legislation for Lawrence Gumbert and his crew that will privatize public land and create unnecessary construction that will obstruct residents' mobility. In the Ninth Council District race, Denise Welsh was put in the race by Ricky Burgess to split the votes. August 2018, Burgess offered his, her husband a position with the Village Collaborative of East Liberty, who, who is controlled by Burgess. Denise Welsh was featured in a Burgess campaign video in May of 2019. Denise Welsh is a plant, and she was planted by Ricky Burgess. Burgess, it's pathetic that you use your Office of Finance to control votes on city council by making threats that you won't give appropriate funds that is needed for their budget. Burgess, you have no shame. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Brown. Oh, my goodness. Look at her. <laughs> my name is Yvonne F. Brown. I live in the Hill District. Um, she spoke about your, your having your uh, proclamations. Well, I want to tell you how they do this. We had elders that were speaking, getting the proclamation. There was five of them. They don't even come sometime when we speak. Five of them don't come. Five of them, they were in the corner over here talking. Why, the elders, I mean, this man was over his, in his 60s, you know. So they don't show respect, because I remember Miss Rudak standing up one day, somebody, yes, and look at the ages of the, of the, of yes. What about the ages of us? You know what? I am very upset 
And I'm, oh, here come Burgess, he's always late, you know. One time he was outside, it was 11 something, I, he was peeping in there. I told the newspaper reporter, Mr. Burgess is in the house, come on in, you allowed in? He won't come like he should. But I want to say this, I am being subject to race-based discrimination. The receptionist at the front desk, when I called, and told them there are two signs that are down on the sidewalk that I had to, I had a car, I had to walk in the street. I'm a school guard, I used to be a school guard. I'm scared of the street, but I had to walk in the street because of the signs. And when I called the reception, I said, red alert, we're in danger. A citizen could get hurt. 311, I said, and leave a message for the mayor that I've seen a public work truck go past. I tried to stop him and show him the sign, and she said, no, 311. I said, leave a message for the mayor. Do you know she didn't? Do you know this is race-based discrimination? Look at her color. You know, she's got an attitude. She's yellow. And I say yellow, people get mad when I say it. But you know what? You treat yellow people better than what you do us. We had the last council, uh, um, receptionist to tell her, I said, take a message, put that pin down. How can they make the decision whether the mayor can get his messages? He promised to see me, and it may be the reason why I can't get a meeting, because she may not even gave it to him. I am upset. She took my civil rights and my liberties away. How can she be the one to make the decision whether the mayor can hear anything that we say? I'm upset because you know what? Like I said, I worked for the state. I worked under Kathleen Mulligan. I worked and I was taught how to do. And then you need to teach your staff to how they're supposed to treat the, uh, to the mayor, to you. She smiles in your face, in the white people's faces. And when I told her, call Mr. So-and-so, she said, well, he's not in his office. I said, please call. She won't even call his office. I had to get the telephone number. She had to write it down. Do you understand? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of you, but I'm, 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 I'm in the process of taking it all legal. Thank you, Ms. Brown. And I'll be equal then. Thanks, Ms. Brown. Hey, may, good morning, Dr. Miller. Uh, nay, Dr. Ronald N. Miller, PhD, Global Studies. Um, the Hill. University of Pittsburgh and University of Oxford, among other institutions. Uh, Global Intelligence Society candidate for President 2020, cgsii.rlm.globalintelligence at gmail.com. Um, October is 2019 GIS sponsored European Intelligence Month, writer Patty Shayevsky, um, Marty. Uh, altered states, uh, find a physical ground, uh, the psychological self, rapture. Uh, concern of Pittsburgh City Council is libraries, and so the CLP as a key city info intel system. I share this concern. Um, what citizens do Ms. Gross, District 7, Ms. Strasburger, District 8, Mr. Lavelle, District 6, Mr. Krauss, District 3 have in common public issues concerning their offices? Um, early 2000s, CLP finances fall. Uh, late 2000 CLP finances rise. City Council passed a tax for the CLP. Um, what do SLKG have in common? They're all Democrats. They're all district representatives and counselors, as counselors, and all are on the CLP Board of Trustees. What a surprise. Uh, President Krauss is CLP uh, uh, trustee secretary. Yay. And Dr. Patrick Dowd. PhD in history is a trustee chair, formerly counselor, District 7, another surprise, covering Lawrenceville, whose proclamations were riddled with informational errors, illogic, and a scarcity of historical intelligence. Dowd heads the CLP, a system responsible for providing the best information, logic, and multiple intelligences to the people of the city of Pittsburgh. Are people elected Dowd? No, because the CLP is not a, an, a democratic institution. Um, what do SL, KG, and D have in common? Support of what I consider to be a Trump-esque quid pro quo to get the financially hopeless CLP to give up control of a key Pittsburgh information intelligence system to the Democratic Party. 
The uh, city council and Peduto, like Trump, with the hapless government of Ukraine, is using public taxpayer money as leverage. What entitles any of you who are on the board of trustees to be on the board of trustees? That you created a public library of your own? That you did research at the Bodley at, at Oxford, as I have, or at the uh, Library of Congress? Um, any of you read a book with, uh, in the sciences within one year? Any of you? What justifies, Ms. Strasburger, you being on this board, or Ms. Gross being on this board? Because you're connected to the Democratic Party. We are seeking ways to remove and replace you as trustees. Thank you, Dr. Miller. May we have our next speaker, please? Are there any further speakers? Okay, seeing no further speakers, I will end the public comment portion of the council meeting and proceed to presentation of papers. Uh, we begin with Councilman Burgess, our Chair of Finance and Law. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Reverend Burgess presents Bill Number 2225, resolution transferring the amount of $150,000 from the Office of Management and Budget's Operating Budget to the Workforce Development Fund, Budget Year 2019. Bill number 2226, resolution amending resolution number 863 of 2018 by reducing flood control projects by $550,000 and increasing bridge upgrades by $530,000 and increasing Swine Burn Bridge by $20,000. Bill number 2227, Resolution amending resolution number 432, which authorized the mayor and the city of Pittsburgh Ethics mm -hmm. Hearing Board to enter into a professional services agreement with Rothman Gordon PC for professional legal services regarding ethics matters by increasing the total cost from $15,000 to $20,000. Bill number 2228, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of finance to execute an agreement of sale and all related documents necessary to effect the purchase of the city of Pittsburgh in lieu of taking by eminent domain of 410 Matthews Avenue in the 30th Ward and to accept a deed for the property, further authorizing the expenditure of funds for the purchase, closing, and other associated auxiliary costs. Councilman Burgess. Oh, yes. Um, I need to um, make a motion to waive Rule 8 on one of the bills. I'm sorry, which one is it? It's, uh, Here it goes, 222228. Mm -hmm. uh, second. We have a motion to waive the rules on Bill 2228 so that it may appear on tomorrow's Standing Committee agenda. Second. Have a second, we do. Uh, further discussion? <coughs> Great. Seeing none, What's all this? in favor, aye. 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 Abstentions. This, Councilwoman, this bill <coughs> is about acquiring property so that the fourth division, the new fourth division uh, plan, okay. can be completed. Aye. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Coghill, our Chair of Urban Recreation. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Gross, our Chair of Land Use and Economic Development. Mr. President. Thanks, Councilwoman. <coughs> Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 2229, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and Director of City Planning to receive $80,000 grant award per agreement between the City and the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources executed 515 of 19 to support the development of an Emerald View Park Master Plan and to further enter into contract to high consultants Merritt Chase to develop aforementioned Master Plan with additional city expenditures not to exceed $55,000 for a total contract value of $135,000. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Harris, our Chair of Human Resources. Thank you, Mr. Kress. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Harris presents Bill Number 2230. Resolution further amending and supplementing resolution number 855 by transferring a total of $37,392.76 from closed and completed projects within District 1 neighborhood needs to public safety AEDs, $9,514, 
District 1 DPW projects, $7,878.76, and American Legion post number 681, $20,000. Bill number 2231, resolution further amending resolution number 549 for the purchase of materials, supplies, equipment, and or services for City Council Neighborhood Needs Program and providing for the payment of cost thereof by transferring $37,392.76 from closed and completed projects within District 1 Neighborhood Needs to Public Safety AED's $9,514, District 1 DPW Projects $7,878.76, and American Legion Post number 681, $20,000. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Lavelle, our Chair of Public Safety Services. May I have Councilman O'Connor for Councilman Lavelle, please? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Yeah. Councilman Lavelle presents Bill Number 2232, resolution authorizing the issue one of a warrant in favor of the Sheriff of the County of Allegheny in an amount not to exceed $15,436.99 for security services provided by the city, the Richard S. Caligari Great Race on September 29, 2019. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman O'Connor, our Chair of Intergovernmental Affairs. Thank you, Thank you, papers, Mr. President. Thank you Councilman. Councilwoman Kel Smith, our Chair of Public Works Services. Thank you, Thank you Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Kel Smith presents Bill Number 2233, Resolution Amending Resolution 665 of 2018, allowing for compensation paid to PennDOT of the local costs associated with the East Carson Street Supplemental Improvement Project by providing for certain contributions to be made by the city through separate legislative appropriations in a subsequent year in an amount not to exceed $886,162.99. Thank you, Councilwoman. There's a request to waive the rules that this may appear on tomorrow's standing committee agenda. Yes, motion to waive the <laughs> rules so the bill, bill 2233 can appear on tomorrow's Second. agenda. Second. Thank you. Uh, may, do we have discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Most abstentions. Uh, motion passes. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilwoman Strasburger, our Chair of Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Strasburger presents Bill Number 2234, Resolution Further Amending Resolution Number 479, as amended by Resolution 769 and Resolution 664, authorizing the Mayor and the Director of Permits, Licenses, and Inspections to enter into a professional services agreement with Building I Inc. to purchase software and related support services that will create an interactive map for internal and public viewing display of planning permit license and violation data in order to correct a JDE account number. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Councilwoman Strasburg, I believe you have a request to waive the rules as well. Yes, I would like to make a motion to waive the rules so that uh, bill number 2019-2234 appears on tomorrow's agenda. Thank you. May I have a second, second. please? Do we have discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, 2234 will appear on tomorrow's standing committee agenda. The Council President has, uh, the Chair has one communication from Kevin Paulos, our uh, Director of Office of Management and Budget. Sure. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Council President Krause presents Bill Number <coughs> 2235, communication from Kevin Paulos, Director of the Office of Management and Budget submitting act and pay approvals on behalf of the Department of Innovation and Performance for Matthew Clink per the act and pay policy revised in June 2018. May I have a motion to receive and file, please? Second. Okay, discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, aye. aye. Opposed abstention, so moved. Uh, that takes us into unfinished business. With no unfinished business before the council, uh, we move into reports of committee for final action, and we begin with Councilman Burgess, our Chair of Finance and Law. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Didn't say that. Councilman Reverend Burgess presents Bill Number 2220, Report of the Committee on Finance and Law, for October 23, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 2081. 
resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Finance to enter into an agreement with CSS Inc. for the provision of a business tax and revenue management software package for a sum not to exceed $5 million over five years and for the payment of costs thereof. Bill number 2180, resolution authorizing the conveyance of a portion of Enright Parklet to Penley Park South Inc and accepting certain property in the 8th Ward of the city for public purposes to become part of Enright Parklet. Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, you've heard the reading and the title of the bills. Uh, further discussion begins with Councilman Burgess. Yes. Uh, first of all, and then I'll explain it, there is a motion to amend Bill 2181 by substitution. That's under our Public Works Committee, Councilman. Oh. I'm sorry. Yes. What? It's under... So I'm Public wrong committee. Under Public Works. Right. It's, uh, I'm got it. Okay. I'll wait till we get there. You're, thank you. Further discussion? No. Councilwoman Harris. Is this being amended? No, it is not, Councilwoman. One of the uh, companion bills will be amended, but that bill is 1281 or right. 2181. That will be read under the Public Works Committee. I'll wait till we get there. Hey, maybe I'm. Step ahead. Okay. All right. So you've uh, the bills are now ready for final action. <laughs> All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Caulfield. Aye. Ms. Gross. Um, I'm actually really struggling on how to vote on 2180 because I'm still I feel like I'm still reading. We had the public hearing yesterday. Um, and I know you all already called for discussion, but I think I, for now I'm, I'll say more when we get to the next one, but I'll abstain on 2180 and I on all, all the bills. Mrs. Harris. I'm going to abstain on both of them right now. Thank you. And the remaining votes under Finance and Law Councilwoman, you wish to register an I vote? There's only two. There's only the 281. Oh, you're going to abstain 80. on both votes under the Finance and Law Committee. Mr. Lavelle, Mr. O'Connor, Mrs. Kelsmith. I on um, Bill 2081 um, and abstain on 2180 until we're going to have amendments, correct? Okay, so I'll wait till that conversation. Sure. Is that Mr. Right? The next, the next bill. bill. There's no amendments on 2081. No amendments. There's no amendments on this one. Okay. There's no amendments right here. All right, then I on this bill, on all bills. That's the next committee. Right. Ms. Strasburger. Ms. Strasburger. Mr. Strasburger. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. On Bill 2180, I 7, two abstentions. On Bill 20, 2081, I's 8, one abstention. Uh, yes, thank you very much. The bills having received then the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Our next committee is our Committee on Public Works Services. Our chair is Councilwoman Teresa Kale Smith. Under this committee, we will be amending or offering for amendment <coughs> Bill uh, 2181. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Councilwoman Kel Smith presents Bill number 2221, report of the Committee on Public Works for October 23rd, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1637, resolution authorizing the mayor and directors of the Department of Parks and of Public Works to enter into a lease agreement with the Pittsburgh Ballet Theater for a portion of real property located on Liberty Avenue between 29th and 30th Street. Bill number 2174, resolution amending and supplementing resolution number 565, which authorized the mayor and the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to enter into an agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development Multi-Module Transportation Fund Program should the grant be awarded by DCED to provide funding for the South 21st Street Complete Green Street project to increase the budget authority to match an increased ask in the grant application to now be $2,500,000 with an unchanged local match of $473,618 to be contributed by the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority. In the event the grant is awarded, this amended resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed two million nine hundred seventy three thousand six hundred and eighteen dollars bill number 2181 resolution authorizing the acceptance by the city 
of the grant of an easement in the 8th Ward, 9th Council District by Penley Park South. Pursuant to the provisions of PPS, revised amended preliminary land development plan approved by the Planning Commission February 12th, 2019 as further amended by order of the Court of Common Pleas, Bill number 2208. Resolution providing for an agreement between the city and Columbia Gas in connection with the paving of Cunniston Avenue between Bun Air Avenue and Drive Cove Street, Fordyce Street between Cali Street and Caperton Street, Caperton Street between Coniston Avenue to Roseden Street, Roseden Street between Caperton Street to Bun Air Avenue and Bun Air Avenue between <coughs> Roseden Street to 208 Bun Air Avenue. The estimated cost of preparation and completion of work is $163,891.82. Bill number 2209, resolution authorizing agreement between the city and Columbia Gas in connection with the restoration and paving of Sydney Street between 21st Street to 17th Street, 17th between Bingham Street and Mural Street, 21 Street between Carson and Sydney, and Wrights Way between 21st and 2107 Wrights Way providing for the payment of the cost thereof to, uh, by Columbia Gas to the city. The estimated cost of preparation and completion of work, $152,827.08. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of the bills under our Public Works Services Committee. Further discussion begins with Councilman Burgess. Yes, um, I want to make a motion to amend by substitution, and then I will explain the amendment in a moment. So on Bill 2181, the councilman is offering up an amendment by substitution. Do I have a second? second. I have a second. S Discussion with Councilman so let me. Burgess. So I am the, the conduit, but I am not the author of these documents. This is being done by the law department in consultation with Domi Finance and the developer. They have been ongoing conversations. In essence, we are, we are validating something that the court has already decided. It is really not in our hands to, to change. The negotiation has been with the city um, and the developer and the courts. And so what I've simply done is to become counsel's representative to that conversation. Now, what you have in front of you, so you understand, is that you have um, sort of three things. One is the changes being made by the amendment by substitution. So the old bill is marked up so you can see the changes. The second bill is the actual substitution. So they are both the same, but one shows you the changes, one's a clean version without the changes. They're the same, except one's the clean version so that you can see. They're all technical in nature. They do not change any of the, any of the significant things. Um, the second thing is what we promised before is a legal description of the easement and attached to that um, is a map explaining this. We had a public hearing, three people came to express their comment at the public hearing. Um, um, and again, um, the administration will continue. They have ongoing conversations. In fact, I, I know they have some more scheduled. They're gonna continue to talk to the residents and the community groups, but in this action, as council, we are simply validating what the court has already decided. And councilman, if I may understand this correctly, these are to be attached as well? Yes. Okay, so in, with your amendment, these two pieces will be attached, the description of the easement and the map. Okay, do we have, for, yes, councilwoman Harris. I'm, I'm sorry, this is a point of order. Uh, going back to 2081, I thought it was 2181. It is so. 2181. No, no, uh, we're on page five. So could you make that an I? <coughs> sure. Uh, 2081. Yeah. Sorry about that. So you're voting I on 2081 and not abstaining? Yes. Yeah, that's I think you've got that wrong from your notes. Huh? I'm sorry, I don't think that's what your notes say. It's. Which is what we're discussing now. Right. She just asked you if you wanted to vote I on 2181. Yes. 2081 is the software package. 2081 is the software package under finance. Okay? Good. She wishes, the councilwoman wishes to register. I had it confused with the bill. That's okay, councilwoman. 
people. Thank you. Do you have discussion on 2181? Are you yep. finished with yours? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Councilwoman Gross. Thank you. I appreciate it. We did have uh, the public hearing on the um, companion pieces. Actually, I'm not sure which one was which. The public meeting was held on 2181, so relevant to this bill as amended. And I had some comments yesterday that I'm just going to repeat that um, this swapping court ordered um, and um, easement allow the developer to own what is to be used as city street. And as I said yesterday, I prefer that our right of way especially, but other public lands stay publicly owned and it, where we have to grant a private easement, there's another matter. But these, these matters increasingly are coming up. It's similar to in my district trying to create miles and miles of riverfront park on what is currently private property. So we as city council, with the riverfront zoning, pushed for years, even before some of us were here, before I was here, to um, have major landholders, especially, but all landholders on the river's edge, give a 90-foot or 100-foot easement on their private property for public access so that we could have citizens have public access to the riverfronts. Um, we have yet really to nail down what those cooperative agreements are going to look like. Who shovels the snow? Who's liable if someone trips on the path? Um, and we're still, I think as a council, going to have to help in that discussion. Um, I, similarly, I have, um, I think that the citizens along this area are concerned about their, their access, even with an easement in place. Um, and you'll notice, I think this council discussed again for years before I was here, the public act, um, trail on what is the Buncher Specially Planned District from 11th Street to 21st Street on the Allegheny River, right as you um, are heading to the Convention Center. Those, that trail, you've heard me complain about it over and over and over. It has been closed over and over and over. It's closed now. Um, so while it's technically there because of construction, <coughs> It has honestly been closed for years. Maybe it'll part reopen for a couple months, then it'll close again. There's an, yet another building being built alongside the first building that's completed at 21st Street that's 365 luxury apartments, and there's another one next to it, and the trail's closed again. So there has not really been public access, um, and it has not been able to be used as a trail. So I understand these concerns. Um, do I think that what we're doing today complies with what the court order is? To the best of my knowledge, I think that we are. Um, are there remaining um, concerns that are valid on behalf of the citizens? I believe also that there are. Um, and I believe that this developer should um, be cooperative with its neighbors. Um, I often say that in my district, this is not my district, um, but I often, I've, I've had dozens now of construction projects with lots and lots of neighbor input. And um, I always say, welcome to the neighborhood. We expect you to be a good neighbor, right? And that does not mean being belligerent, litigious, or bullying to your next door neighbors. Um, we probably all in our council districts have residential neighbors who are that way with one another, and it's no good for the neighborhood. It never ends well, and nobody's happy, right? So um, what we expect to see is what I'm understanding. We've got, we all got a letter. I just got it uh, minutes before walking in here that um, what we understood from this public discussion now for several years was that there should be an expansion of the TRID. That would be a council action that is yet to come, right? Uh, and we expect that all parties are going to move that forward expeditiously and with good faith, um, that there should be um, an approved construction management plan. We expect that all parties are gonna move that forward expeditiously and in good faith um, and cooperatively, and that there is um, some commitments for the improvements on the park, including the uh, some some very specific um, requests about um, how it's built out and the amenities that are provided in the park. Um, and we also expose, expect those to move forward expeditiously and uh, in, in good faith. So that those bills don't belong in this mm -hmm. bill. And this bill is the first piece that I understand that the court 
is supporting. Um, so I, I do, I have a lot of mixed emotions again about how we are, um, you know, moving forward without a full, full commitments in place. So, um, having said all that, I, um, I would look forward to supporting the next pieces. And I understand that the residents feel uncomfortable supporting these first <coughs> pieces out of sequence with the other pieces. So um, I will abstain today, but I do understand that we are not um, in the driver's seat, frankly, with this, with this project. And, um, and uh, I, as I just said, I, I just expect that hopefully we'll be moving forward here on out. Um, in a, in a more compatible way. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Harris. Yes. Okay. I will be abstaining on 2181. Sure. Uh, today, uh, I'm not going to say everything again that Councilwoman uh, just said. And I was not at the public hearing yesterday, uh, so didn't even get to see it yet. Okay. Uh, so I will be abstaining on Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, okay. Uh, the bills are now ready for final action. Forgive me, we voted on the amendment, correct? <coughs> we did vote on the We did not. Okay, so we're going to take a voice vote on the amendment? Yes, please. I'm sorry. I meant roll call and I said voice. Forgive me. This vote is on the amendment for 2181, Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Abstain. Mr. Lavelle. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kelsmith. Aye. Ms. Jossberger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Aye, seven, one abstention. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, bill is amended. Uh, final action on the bills uh, in their entirety now under our Committee on Public Works. These bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, again, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Abstain on Bill 2181 and aye on all other bills. Mrs. Harris. Aye on all bills except for 2181. I'll abstain. Mr. Lavelle. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Mrs. Kelsmith. Aye. Ms. Strasburger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Aye. All, <clears throat> on Bill 2181, I 7, two abstentions. All other bills, ayes 8, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having then received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. We move on next to our Committee on Land Use and Economic Development. Our Chair is Councilwoman Deborah Gross. Mr. President. <coughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 2222, Report of the Committee on Land Use and Economic Development for October 23rd, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 1953, Resolution Providing for the Designation as a Historic Structure under Title 11 of the Code of Ordinances that certain structure known as the Heathside Cottage, located at 416 Katoma Street in the Fine View neighborhood, 25th <laughs> Ward. Bill Number 2172. Resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of City Planning to execute relevant agreement to receive grant funding from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection's DC Fast Charging and Hydrogen Fueling Grant Program to install electric vehicle charging stations in a parking lot at 6117 Kirkwood Street and further providing for an agreement and expenditures to not exceed $245,650 the grant requires a match from the Pittsburgh Park and Authority in the amount of $81,883 for this stated purpose. Total project, $327,533. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading of the title of the bills under our Committee on Land Use and Economic Development. Do we have further discussion on the bills? Then seeing none, these bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. 
Aye. Mr. Coghill? Aye. Ms. Gross? Aye. Mrs. Harris? Aye. Mr. O'Connor? Mrs. Kel Smith? Aye. Ms. Strasburger? Aye. Mr. Cross, President? Aye. Ayes eight, no zero. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills then, having received the legally required number of votes, are finally passed. Our next committee is our Committee on uh, Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. Our Chair is Councilwoman Erica Strasburger. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. <coughs> Councilwoman Strasburger presents Bill Number 2223. Report of the Committee on Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management for October 23rd, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 2156, resolution amending resolution number 341, by further authorizing the Mayor and Director of the Department of Public Works and the Director of the Department of Innovation and Performance to enter into an amended agreement with Cartograph Systems, Inc. in order to continue licensing application software and for the purchase of associated subscription, maintenance, cloud hosting, and professional services for years 2019, 2020, and 2021. The cost of the extension shall not exceed $559,706.37. Total cost, $1,031,556.37 for years 2016 through 2021. Bill number 2176, resolution amending resolution number 639, which authorizes the city to enter into a contract with the Pittsburgh Community Television for Public Access Television Services by extending the term of the agreement for one year to September 18, 2020. Bill number 2178, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of innovation and performance on behalf of the city to enter into a master lease agreement with Dell Financial Services for leasing services to lease electronic devices with installation and support services for a period of seven years. The total amount of funds for this equipment services will be appropriated and approved on the separate subsequent request and will not exceed $3,358,711.23. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading of the title of the bills. Under our Committee on Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management, is there further discussion on any of the bills? <laughs> Councilwoman Harris. Yes. Uh on bill twenty one seventy or did we change numbers here? Which bill are you uh PCTV's agreement? That okay. would be twenty one seventy six. Twenty one seventy six. Okay. And I, I will be voting no on that today because I remember years past when uh, the money wasn't even coming through the city and going right to PCTV. Not that I have any problem with PCTV, but I do have a problem with how the money is being distributed. Uh, by my paper here somewhere. Every year it has gone up for PCTV and it has gone down for our city cable. Uh, if you watch us on television, as soon as you turn your face, you get on here. I said that from day one when we got these. We can't shut the microphone off up there and God only knows what else the cable guys need. Uh, maybe a few bodies, but you know to take 80% and just hand it over uh, and and just maybe a fourth given to our city cable is not right, especially when we do not have equipment. And uh, that's the only place they get the money from, is this. And as you see, and uh, I could give you a copy of the paper of how it has just gone up over the years. 
We got that last week, Councilwoman. Yes. So um, it's not that I have a problem with PCTV at all. I don't have a problem with them. But we do need equipment that people can hear exactly what we're saying and how we're saying it. And uh, that hasn't been happening. So I'm going to vote no on this today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman uh, Kel Smith. I just want to echo what Councilwoman Harris said about our, our microphones and some of the things and the money that we're putting into, into, our, into our own uh, equipment and things that we need to provide to the public here's what's going on with their government, which I think is, is extremely important. So I, I, just, I just want to thank you for making those comments. I agree with you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman. Uh, okay, the bills uh, under our Innovation Performance and Asset Management uh, Committee are now ready for final action. <laughs> All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. No. Oh. Uh, there's more. On Bill more. 2176. Um, and I on all other bills. Mr. O'Connor, Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Aye. On Bill 2176, aye 7, 1, no. All other bills, aye 8, no, 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having then received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. We say that, but we say Our final that. committee of the morning. Uh, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Our committee on uh, intergovernmental affairs, our chair is Councilman O'Connor. <coughs> Councilman O'Connor presents Bill number 2224, report of the Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs for October 23rd, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 2029, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's official sewer facilities plan for the 201 Arsenal Phase II Residential Land Development Project located at 135 39th Street. Bill number 2173, resolution authorizing the Mayor and Director of the Department of Public Works to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with Allegheny County with respect to the winter seasons of 2019-2020 2020 to 21 and 2021 to 2022, November 1st to March 31st of each year, under which the city will store, handle, and load salt for the county, and the county will do the same. And the city will perform snow and ice clearance together with the application of anti-skid and or de-icing materials for certain county roads, including bridges and their approaches, and the county will perform the same. <coughs> Bill number 2205. Resolution providing for an agreement between the city and McCaffrey in Interest, Inc. and or the URA Authority in connection with improvements to the cartway generally at the Strip District Terminal at 1600 Smallman Street and for access to make those improvements and for temporary operation and maintenance in anticipation of further public right-of-way, public parking, public operation and maintenance and potential public dedication of the cartway at the site. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You have heard the reading and the title of the bills under our Intergovernmental Affairs Committee. Continuing discussion begins with Councilwoman Harris. Thank you. Uh, on 2173, I'm just wondering how many of the boroughs, uh, other than the city of Pittsburgh, are doing for the county, in a county, is doing for them uh, in the maintenance that we're doing. We are part of the county. And it seems like every time you turn around, you know, we have to pay somebody to, to do something. We all pay county taxes, and we should get the same as any borough or township. Thank you. Thanks, Councilwoman. Okay, without further discussion, uh, these bills are now ready for final action, and all in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Mrs. Kelsmith. Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Aye. 
ayes eight, no zero. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having then received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Uh, that takes us into motions and resolutions. The chair has several meeting announcements. Uh, this afternoon, council is holding a briefing uh, sessions uh, beginning at 1.30 and a second briefing at 2.15 as it relates to the finalized Environmental Protection Agency consent degree. Then tomorrow afternoon at 12 noon, council members will meet for an executive session on Bill 2175 as it relates to Semaker, I hope I said that right, Councilwoman Street, in the 26th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh. Also, tomorrow afternoon at 1.30, Council will be hosting a Cablecast public hearing on Bills 1977 and 1994 as they relate to the naming of Stratmore Park and the Larimer <coughs> Avenue basketball court, respectively. Then on Thursday, October 31, Council will be holding a briefing with sessions beginning at 1.30 and a second session at 2 p.m. as it relates to uh, Domi fee schedule changes. Uh, with that, may I have a motion to excuse our absent member, approve our minutes, and adjourn our meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. We are adjourned.